with our Tom. Let me start with the breaking news because, yeah. first of all, I'm curious why LaGuardia, JFK is very close, then you have Newark. You have lots of airports in the path of this big haze, this smoke coming down from the north. First, tell us the breaking news, but also, yeah. are there lots of other places at risk right now? Yeah, and pardon me as I look off screen here to a computer that I have up onto an FAA uh, database on what's happening at airports. Uh, here's where we stand. LaGuardia did have a pause for a while, uh, no activity, but that's now been lifted. Here's where we stand at this minute. LaGuardia Airport in New York, arrivals delayed right now by about 100 Let's call it two hours, 119 minutes, two hours on arrivals into LaGuardia. Departures delayed by about 30 minutes. Newark's right now, Newark Airport departures delayed by 82 minutes. Philadelphia, I just wanted to check that really quickly. We had some delays there. I think we're looking at about 29 minutes. Pardon me, Chris, while I look off camera. Uh, I was surprised that so far... Yeah, that's right. It's 29 minutes, 30 minutes out of uh, Philadelphia on the ground delay because of the smoke and the haze. I was surprised so far. I don't see Boston as being affected. Uh, mm. And here in D.C., uh, it certainly is not as bad as New York, but we've got thick, thick haze over the city. Uh, and the air traffic into and out of D.C. at the moment not dramatically affected. At the moment, this is a, a Newark story, a LaGuardia story, a Philly story. But as the smoke plume moves, uh, you could expect that other airports would be affected. And I think you're right. you got to wonder why JFK is not affected. I presume that's a Bill Karen's question. Largely, it has to do with the wind. Okay. Well, I mean, first of all, let's also point out we're at the start of a very, very heavy summer travel season. But yeah. Bill Karen's, let me show you because there's an amazing picture we have. This is the Earth Cam over Manhattan. This is insanity. I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this. Tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing, and can you answer my question, Tom's question, about sort of the way the winds may be affecting what gets grounded, what doesn't, who's got horrible air quality, and whose is only bad? All right, Chris, let me give you the breaking news first. New York City is now in the hazardous air quality. That's extremely rare. That's almost never happened in New York City's history. This has been monitoring since the late 90s. So this is something that none of us have seen here before. That's the air that is outside that I'm in right now, why I'm wearing the mask. It goes from unhealthy, very unhealthy, to hazardous. Only Syracuse earlier today in Scranton and now in New York City have reached this hazardous category. And that means it's not just hazardous for people that have respiratory issues, children or the elderly. That's for everyone that you see. And the New York Health Department is telling everyone if they're outside, you should be wearing a mask. If not, try to stay indoors. This is not area you want to be outside and you want to be breathing. It got so dark in the last hour. If you look down here, the street lights came on. That's how thick and dense the smoke is. And keep in mind, this isn't like a fire that's like in New Jersey or the Catskills. This fire is in Quebec, 500, 600, 700, 800 miles away from here. So again, this air mass, this really thick, dangerous stuff is now settling down towards Philadelphia. It's in the New York City area, southern New England and areas of Pennsylvania. Throughout the night tonight, it's going to make its way down towards Maryland. Delaware, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and you'll wake up to s similar to this tomorrow. So, Chris, this is unprecedented. This is dangerous air quality. I can't stress that enough.